Hey, welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. And this is Hey Man. We are in, are we in Bartlesville? We're in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Coming to you live. And um, one of the things that we have really enjoyed doing is when we go to these different cities is um, hopping into other people's podcast studios and recording one. This one is super dope. Yeah, I really like this one. Shout out to, uh, shout out Jared for uh, letting us come out here and, uh, and take the time out of his day for us to be able to do this big time this, but this is my favorite background and favorite setup so far uh, hands down it's not even close you know because it it has and we were just discussing off the air just real quick about yeah, like because there's a lot of x-men stuff here and so i'm a, i've always been a huge x-men fan it, it, by the way you know when i was collecting comics as a kid this is how old i am ready for this sure they used to send I used to get comic books in the mail, Oof. <laughs> like a scholastic, like like a like a monthly membership kind of thing, or they just yeah 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 it was a membership yeah yeah okay. yeah, yeah and so we used to get comic books and now do you know what I collected a comic book when I was a kid which co which comic book you, you want to guess okay I'll, I'll tell you what what my brothers collected and then okay. you can, okay um Adam was Spider Man okay. Jonathan okay. went straight daredevil. Not what I expected, but okay. Yeah, I believe Dan was like Sailor Moon. <laughs> right? That wasn't a comic, it was an anime, but But not but, and by the way, there was no anime. That wasn't happening when I was growing up. Um, but I think Dan was um Oh, the Avengers. Okay. That sounds about right. Wanna... He seems like a big Captain America guy. Oh, he might have been Captain America. He's like he seems like a big Captain America guy. Yeah, yeah. You want to guess what I was? Not X Men, so that not, was yeah, yeah, not X Men. Not X Men. Oh, yeah, nope, yeah. Nope, nope. Is it in this? Is it in this room? Looking at it, I mean, I'm sure. Let me just turn this off real quick, so we don't get any back. Um, is it in this room? I mean, I how could it not be? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, how could it not? Is be? it? Is it a movie? Right? Like, has it been a, come out as a movie oh, recently? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's around here. It's I'm around trying here. to see where he's looking. I, I, that's why I have the sunglasses on. Well, you turned your head completely that well, way. Well, so, that's I mean... where the Marvel stuff is. So, okay, so it's something Marvel. Well, I, I wasn't collecting DC. You think I was a loner in school? No, 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 no. no absolutely. <laughs> Come you on. think I had no friends and I just collected Flash comic books? That would have been that would have been a bummer for sure if yeah, you collected man. Flash. Yeah, dude. There's a lot. There's a lot. So you tell me. How... You would guess. Well, is it is it what we talked about earlier? Is it Fantastic Four? No, no um is is this person an avenger yeah I, is yeah. it is it iron man thor or hulk oh danny collected iron man i okay. col i collected thor thor okay i'll tell you something else i think marvel look and the gallic guardians movie fantastic did you see the new one no i can't wait C can i say but like i think they're up against it dude Look, I don't mind replacing Chris Evans with Anthony Mackie. Mackie is a really personable, funny. He can do he can do serious acting and be funny. And right? has he's, yeah, he can be serious, but also has great one liners and great timing. And so. we and we know Mackie. Mackie's a good dude. Mackie's a good dude, and he's funny, and he's perfect for it. He right? loves it when you call him the Black Avenger. That's Don Cheadle. He does just, not. That's just not so Don knows. Cheadle. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we were because we, we look, I, I put together the. Um, David Ortiz roast. Yeah. Uh, when he retired, and by the way, Nesson bought it and buried it, B buried it forever. Because there were some, there was some things said. Yes. There, there were some things said that you can't. Well, here's the deal. So, can't say so again. when we set it up, right? Nesson, which is the New England Sports Network, they were like, "Let's, we're gonna buy it." Yeah. And we were all like, "You're never gonna be able to air this. Do you know what a roast is?" No. Right. And um, so. Just so you guys, if you guys have never heard about this roast so far, yeah. so I when when he was retiring, uh, David Ortiz, who's buddy ours and and um, maybe my favorite baseball player ever. He's he's mine for sure, one hundred percent. And so they were the their his foundation, who we've worked with a bunch. They were asking me like, "What do you want to do? What do you think we should do?" And I was like, "Let's let's do a roast." And by the way, most athletes um, are not. Whatever it is, they're maybe a little touchier than the, or they're not used to people joking with them like that. Yeah. Have said 
hard fucking pass to a roast, right? Well, yeah, because you hear all the things that random people just scream at them like during a game, right? I, I can't also, imagine what my close friends would have to say about me that uh, like Yeah, dude. I, I understand it. I understand it like it makes it's, sense. It's also different. Look, comics are used to getting roasted. Actors are used to getting roasted. Because here's the deal. If you are a professional athlete, right? Mm -hmm. You grew up I know this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but it's not. You grew up a superhero. You grew up being able to do things that most of us can't do. And not only that, you were so revered and so your entire life and put on a pedestal. You have an an ego of entitlement and all that. Not I don't know if it's entitlement, but you have an ego. How could you not? People have been licking your nutsack your entire life, right? G telling you how great you are and all this shit. And especially when you get to the pros, dude. Yeah. And on the level of somebody who you'd roast, that's the top of the top. Right. So you look at the top of the top of football, baseball, basketball, whatever it is. Right. Right? Hockey. Yo, people have been licking your sack your entire life. So you, you're not used to it. Comedians, we, we have eaten shit until, and if you get to a point where people are roasting you, and you've you've gone through the ringer, you you know what I mean. So it doesn't, and it's part of your job. So it's not part of their job to get roasted, right? 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 When I asked Poppy, I said, "What do you think about us roasting you?" And he's like, "Okay." And um, we got there that night, and I go, "You ready?" He goes, "Man, I don't speak that good English. I'm not gonna understand most of what they're saying, <laughs> anyways." <laughs> Which made me laugh. I know he was joking, but but um, at that show, right? Yeah. Who was at the show? Tell everybody. Who was on who was on stage? Well, we had uh up there we had we had Dustin Pedroia, we had Bill Burr, we had Sarah Tiana, uh, we had you, uh, we had Rob Gronkowski, Anthony Mackey, Anthony Mackey, uh um Lenny Schmidt. Oh my god, not Lenny Schmidt, Lenny Sh Lenny uh Sh Sh Clark. Clark. Uh Adam Ray, who dressed up he went into makeup as an old, old Yankee fan. Like a 75-year-old man as a Yankee fan. And just fucking killed it. Yeah. It I was... feel like we're missing one person besides Poppy. I don't know. But anyways, point being, Mackie, super funny dude. And that... Oh, that, he's also... I just I just noticed him. He's, yeah. And that, talking, that yeah. roast is like... Um, was so funny. But Nesson is a family sports network. Never in a million years could Nesson... Um, I've, I've asked about wrestling it out of their hands, and they're like, it's not going to happen. For a ridiculous price, maybe, but we, we don't have that price of... We don't have that money. I'll tell you something else right now. There are a couple people but that, that, who don't want that. Gronk doesn't want that out. No. No. He was funny, but he was dark. Wait, wait. Didn't something of it get out and he got shit for it? Yeah, and man. And that's what... Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Which, it might be one of the reasons why that I can't do it. Yeah, but also um, I find it bullshit that he got shit for it. It's a roast. Like I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, yeah, um, won't get into that though. But back to it. I think Mackie is a great, and and I don't, I, I don't want to listen to the Captain America isn't black. I don't want, I don't want to listen to that shit, guys. Yeah, I said this on, on on last week's pod. Are you critiquing a made up world? <laughs> You're making, yeah, they can make a, up whatever they want in the make believe world. It's a good it's point. make believe. It's a good point. And like, yo, that series, did you watch the, the, what was it on? Was it on Netflix? Uh, uh, Disney Plus. Disney right? Plus. Yo, that, that, yo, that storyline, I was wondering, I'm like, how the fuck are they going to do this? That storyline of, you know, being conflicted about being Captain America and being black. Because how black people have been treated in America right. was fucking genius. There, yeah, it's a, it's a great move. It, genius. Whether you want to, like, it was such a genius way to get into it. So I'm, I'm, but I'll tell you two characters I don't think they'll ever be able to replace. Who I, do you think? Iron Man. Yo, you hands down. You just can't replace Tony Stark. I don't want y'all to know this. Like well, there, there is. It's not replacing Tony Stark. Well, it's replacing Robert Downey. Like right. you just can't. You can't. He, there's nowhere in between. And the second one is, well, actually, no, they already three. did. There's three of them. Well, there's one that I thought, like, I thought the second movie shouldn't have come out. Which one? Black Panther. I think, mm -hmm. I, 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 like, for me, like, I saw the second, I saw it, and it's was like, eh, okay. But, like, for me, 
hard, hard, hard to replace him. I think hard to replace him. I think they did the best they could. I think they had to make that movie. I don't, well, you know me, I'm going to watch everything. But if yeah. they make a third, I'm not super psyched, but I'll watch it just to see how they do. Because I, you know what Marvel's done that DC hasn't? Made great sequels? Well, they have my confidence. Yeah, DC's, I can only think of one set of movies from DC that is good. That might be better, actually, that might be, is better than some Marvel movies. And that is The Dark Knight. Yeah, you love okay? it. You love that it. trilogy is up there, dude. Like, that trilogy is up there with super like good superhero movies no doubt no that doubt. that thing is up there hands down and if you deny that i don't want to hear it here's who i think they can't replace they can't replace robert downey jr not only is he one of the best actors ever but his blend his uh he really like the reason i said you can't replace tony stark is because when i think of that movie like yeah i think it's robert downey of course but that stark character yeah, is impossible to replace that attitude in that um the the basically how well him and John Favreau and Gwyneth Paltrow all blend they have such great chemistry and he is so such a good actor that he can do funny in serious moments and still deliver serious lines in a snarky way yeah hard to replace i don't think you're ever going to be able to replace chris hemsworth i'm sorry he's so fucking good for the same reason oh, you won't Thor? he's so good dude Getting the funny, although this last Thor movie was do do stu. Thor Ragnarok's the best Thor. It's uh, for me. It's like top top five my superhero movies right now. Wait, is that the one that just came out? No, no. Ragnarok was number three, three, I think, right? Yo, but yo, that this, movie was so love and, funny. love and Thunder was was do do stu. Oh, my girlfriend Iman really liked it. No. She also just loved the soundtrack, like the the music for it. That was really good. Okay, but that Ragnarok movie is the. Funny. Oh my God. You like that, that movie? Was so yeah, Hulk was funny. funny too. Yeah, because they're on the planet. Yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. just, it's when he's st banners straight Hulk. Yeah. I like, love that one. Oh, good Lord. Do you know who else I don't think I can replace? And I'm it might be why they haven't put out another one of their movies. Uh, X Men. Yeah. Because you can't replace Wolverine. Nah. Hugh Jackman's impossible to replace. Nobody can match what he does on screen like he, that. And he looked so perfect. He looked so yeah. perfect. Yeah. So, like, I wonder if they're... I, I don't know that they'll ever make another Iron Man. Honestly. I, I, I think pray they, to God I, they don't. I think they're going to branch off, obviously, and you can see by the movies I have coming out that they're going to branch off and yeah. make it a little more female and a little more diverse, which is... I'm Guys, I'm up for whatever. I'm for, yeah. Because, like I told you, Marvel has my trust because they've consistently put out good stories and good movies. DC, you know, after what they did to Wonder Woman... After that first one, they took the perfect formula, which is Chris Pine, who has all the attributes of Robert Downey Jr. and Hemsworth and a guy who can be serious. Not as funny as Robert Downey Jr. Though. No, but he's so good at that. And they, that second movie, they took all the funny out. And they just made a lot of heartfelt, yo, I was just like, yeah, come on, bring back the funny. You have two great actors, him and Gal Gadot. <laughs> I, you know, I can't believe we've gone straight superhero the first. Man, how can you not, though? Like, we, I I, we, you and I could just talk about this room. Like, the Power Ranger shit for me that isn't even on camera is huge nostalgia. Were you a Power Ranger guy? Were you even my dad? What, the, what kind <laughs> of question is that? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Of course I love the... Ugh, that is disappointing. That is disappointing. Wait a second now. Let me ask you something. Didn't you dress up as a Power Ranger one Halloween? Yeah. Yeah, you did, right? Definitely. What color Power Ranger? Well, I'm going to test you. I'm not telling you. Okay. 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 For okay. me, I'm not like, going to look. For, look. for me, look. there's only one real answer. I'm not going to look. I don't know. I'm going to. There are four Power Rangers, right? There are five. Why don't you just look at the I colors? I don't want to look because I want to guess the colors. There is a couple. It's more than four, and it's more than five as well. There's no way there's more than five Power Rangers. I'm pretty sure there's either six or seven. Get the hand signal from our man. I think How it's many? seven. Seven? Okay, let me guess the colors. Ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Six. I was wrong. Six. I can't I can't read. Okay. I can't okay. read numbers. Okay. That wasn't numbers. That was just digits on his hand. Right, but I still can't read is the point. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, actually, I was right. It was seven. Okay, here we go. Seven. I'm going to go red. Okay, that's one. Wait, are you guessing what I was what I was guessing? No, as? let me guess the, the colors okay, first. Okay, and okay, okay. Let me. Yep. Red Power Ranger. Yep. 
There's got to be a green one. Yep, there is a green one. There's got to be a blue one. There is a blue one. There's got to be a yellow one. There is a yellow one. Okay. Well done. That's a good start. Well, that to me feels pretty Yeah, pretty the basic. primary colors make sense. Yep. Okay. I'm, oh, yeah, there is seven because now I'm thinking of, yeah. How many okay, have I named it. already? Four. Four. Okay. I'm going to go purple. Nope. Damn it. You're you're kind of close. There's no Barney. No, but you but think same general, the same area as purple. Magenta. Getting closer. Eggplant. Further. <laughs> You they should have an eggplant Power Ranger who's just his, just, just the outline of his dick is in that tight ass tight. Yo, those outfits are tight. Yo, they should have eggplant Power Ranger and just fucking eggplant. What him. if it's just a power instead of a Power Ranger suit? He was just in a what? It was just a straight eggplant made into a Power Ranger. I'm okay with either one of those. Okay, so not there's no purple Power Ranger. No, but P P. Think of P. Colors that start with the letter P. Pretty, <laughs> you are ridiculous. That's pink. Not, there you go. Okay, pink Power Ranger. Pink Power. Gee, I gotta tell you, if you're the pink Power Ranger, you drew the short straw. Ah, debatable. Yo, dude. You... I mean, the yellow and the pink were always the girls. Oh, and then the other. I didn't were know the they were girl Power Rangers. Yeah, so the yellow and the pink were always the girl Power Rangers. Okay, and then the other five are dudes. Okay, so is there is there black? Correct. There is. There is. Yo, okay. Well, nobody wants to be brown. Nobody wants to be the shit color Power yeah. Ranger. I, yeah, that's the wouldn't sell well for Doo Doo Stew Power Ranger. Uh, okay, hold on. Orange. No. Rainbow. <laughs> it's 2023. Yeah, that, that, this was not made in 2023. <laughs> is there a 2020? Is there a Rainbow Power Ranger? No. Oh. White. There you go. Really? That yep. seems like hard to keep that but he, suit clean. Well, no, he's not all white. He's like a white power. Look, look, top top shelf. You see him up there? Yeah. He's like white, but he's got like a like a black and gold. Oh yeah, yeah. Chest plate, like black and yellow. He, black and yellow. He's like the he's like uh, he's like the legendary power ranger. Like he's like the the leader of the pack, but he like only shows up in like certain scenarios. That's fire. He's got a full ass power ranger tattoo. Oh, all right. But, okay. Um. But so yeah, I was uh. Okay, now so what what color power ranger was I? Oh. You were definitely. Uh, can I get two guesses? You can have two guesses. I know it's one of these two. You were red. Nope. You were blue. No. Oh. I was the Black Power Ranger. When? When I was like seven. I did that before I was a ninja for eight years. Yeah, dude. Can I tell you guys my favorite? <laughs> so Jacob, when he was like three, he didn't want. He didn't like costumes, so he would put on a piece of clothing, and so one and just tell you the name of the costume. So one time. We were going out, and he put on this coat, and he was ready to go out. And, and my daughter was like a vampire. Mm -hmm. Trevor was a soccer player, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jacob came out. I go, what are you, dude? And he goes, I'm Jacob in a blue coat. And I was like, great. Is that your costume? And you were like, yep. And so every door they'd come up to, they'd be like, oh, you're a vampire. Oh, you're a soccer player. And they would go, who are you? And you were like, I'm Jacob in a blue coat. And you would say it like I was annoyed because dude. everybody would ask me what I was. After the third house, you looked at me like, how do they not know what the fuck is I'm going on? Jacob in a blue coat. I'm like, you, you just gotta, you're going to have to let everybody know you're Jacob in a blue coat. It's pretty funny. What's your favorite Halloween costume ever? I know what mine was. I don't know if it was my favorite, but I, at, at the time, let, let, let me back up. I got two. What's your, what was the costume you were most excited to wear at the time? And I can tell you what mine was. Um, I might even be able to put a picture up. I might be able to find one. I I wish I didn't procrastinate it because I could have done it so much better. Yeah. But that Kylo Ren, not yeah, a cosplay, but I did a Kylo Ren uh, uh, costume. So I bought like this like shitty little cape from Amazon. It was almost like a street Kylo Ren. I was like, I was like, I was just like, I was in skinny jeans and like a fucking black turtleneck and a cape and Air Force Ones with my hair back. And I went and got the special effects makeup and like actually yeah. made the scar on my face by myself. So, you know, I did what I could, but yeah, I was like, I was like Kyle Ren from Walmart or yeah, wish dude. or whatever you want like to call South it. Park. Kyle, Kyle Ren. Yeah. 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 yeah it yeah. was, uh, but I really enjoyed that one. Um, and then, but I think my favorite one was this last year, my girlfriend, uh, had a Spider-Man costume. So she was like, she was like, what are we doing for Halloween? And I was like, just, you can be Spider-Man. She goes, oh, yeah, what are you going to be? I go, Mary Jane, just get me a red wig. She was like, that's not a bad idea, but I have a better idea. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, 
why don't I get you a giant weed leaf costume? And yeah, you can be Mary Jane. And you're Mary Jane. And I was like, that, yes. We made the fu- one of the funniest TikToks I think yeah. I've ever made ever. She's like, I'm Spider Man, and you know, or Spider Man, and this is, you know, and I would just, I, she's like, this is my Mary Jane. And I just like, sl- I was wearing socks on a hardwood floor, and I just slid into frame like so dirty good, dancing. Dude. Sup. So good. So much fun. I like that one a lot. Um, you know what my favorite was? And just because this was a different time and I was a younger dude, it, it, you don't know who Gerardo is, but Gerardo oh. sang a song called Rico Suave. Suave. I had a friend in high school oh, who I called Rico Suave. And so, called Rico Suave. yo, dude, this was a time, you know, I had my ripped jeans. Maybe the I, it might have been a period when I was in the best shape of my life. So you know how anything you where said I, that a couple times in the last ten years. Anything where I could just wear a leather jacket and no shirt underneath, <laughs> that was my favorite costume. Yeah, 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 dude. The, I'm at an age where I reminisce, where that I used to like to dress like that. That's, but dude, I had you the, should tell me you used to wear white mesh t-shirts also, which is unfortunate with jorts. Uh, never wore jorts in my life. I Cat. wore I wore a white mesh t-shirt, maybe t-shirt. I wore a white mesh shirt. T-shirt, shirt, white mesh. Same no, thing. white mesh shirt, but it was like football mesh, not like big open Miami Beach wet mesh. Do you know what I mean? It's whatever you want to tell yourself. Yeah, well, I don't have to tell myself that. I'm just telling you. I already know. Sure, whatever. And so <laughs> the Rico Suave, yo, dude, you better back off my white mesh shirt. Hey, man, all I'm saying is you're wearing a sunflower on this hoodie, too. Yeah, with dude, no, this with, is with, a with, dope with, ass. What, with no a, pocket. You don't even have a pocket on the hoodie. What's this up? is a fucking, hold on. Yeah, it feels like it feels like it's a beach towel. Like I could go out to the beach and dry myself with L- that. Listen, I don't want to tell you you have bad uh, style because you, can't. you don't. You actually have really good yeah, style. You, you can't tell me because I yeah because it's just not true. You have good style, but you, you don't. This is a dope ass hoodie. Are That's you fun. kidding me? Or you don't think so? No, I like it. I just hate that it doesn't have a pocket. Me too. One- it's fucking. I hate. Look, if you're making a hoodie. For all those people out there, if you're making clothing and you make a hoodie and you're like, oh, aesthetically, the design goes over the po- the pouch, so let's take the pouch out. I, if I see it and I love it, but I see no pouch, I will actively not buy it. Can I tell I you? I just want to put that out there. Please, if you're making hoodies, put the pouch there. It drives me crazy. He laughs at me because he knows at this point in time that he'll just hear me go, damn it. Because I, he's I always, reaching, I, he's reaching to put his hands the there, hands. and there's no fucking pocket there. And I say it out loud. It's I go, Damn so it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. I really enjoy that, um, dude. So let's just tell everybody what we've been doing. First of all, thank you all so much. Yeah, um, Fort Smith and Tulsa. We first we played Kane's Ballroom, which I have always wanted to play. A legendary fucking joint. Yep. Everybody, every musician on the way up. On the way down and in between has played that fucking room when we went to pick up a guitar there today so it's hansen week in tulsa oklahoma and so hansen's there just there is there is just a line of like around the building around the building all of just women getting hansen tickets but the guy was telling us from all over the world yeah it was like germany france like there are so many people here yeah. just for this weekend and yeah I was like that is and they're bringing their kids yeah because they were kids when they listened to the music but it's it's pretty awesome to see to see that before we go into the shows what concerts would we go to together you think definitely i think you and i would go see eminem together 100 percent. i think there's not even a question for that what about rage i would definitely i was supposed to see rage at coachella oh that's right not this past year the year before and before covid shut everything down yeah. i had tickets to go see rage in the desert God damn it. And then they dropped out. They yeah. dropped out of both of them. I was so upset. I would pay. I was so upset. I, I was like, yo, I was like, we don't have to be anywhere up front or anywhere near, but I am sitting and headbanging for this entire fucking set, and I won't have a voice for the next day, but Dude, I'm doing it. Like, I'm 100%. doing it. 100%. Rage, I, if you're talking about money that I would spend to see a concert, Rage is at the top. I, I, I don't blame you. Because I really don't. I made a mistake with Tom Petty where I was like, nah, I'll see it. I remember I was like, I'm going to see him at the Greek. And I was like, nah, I'm going to wait. And I was like, I'll see him again. And he passed away. And I was like, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. We have to go. I don't know how long our M's going to tour. So we have to get to an Eminem concert. Would soon. you go see Miley Cyrus with me? I, 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 think, I think I would go for the performance. Yeah, that's it. I think I would definitely go. 
I think uh, I think my girlfriend would be mad at me though if I went without her. We'd all go together. Perfect. Okay. Who else? Um. Would you go see Jay Z? Yeah. Okay. Me too. Absolutely. I'd go yeah. see Jay Z. I'd go see Jay Z. I'd go see a Nas concert. I just don't know if he's ever going to tour again. He puts out great music uh, recently in the last couple of years. I just don't know if he tours with that music. I honestly don't know if that's on my list of something I'm leaving my house to go do. Oh, uh, I already, I've already, i already seen her, but I know you'd see her and I'd see her again, Lady Gaga. A hundred percent. I'd go see, I'd go see go her again. I would go see Gaga. I got, uh, when I went to the last, not last Coachella, uh, two Coachellas ago, we were supposed to get Beyonce, but she was pregnant. So she dropped out, still got paid her million dollars, and then they filled that spot with Lady Gaga. And I was like, fuck yeah, performer for performer. I'm in for that. Like, uh, but I'm going to go and say something controversial. Gaga, and, Gaga is iconic also, by the way. like, There's just, no doubt, dude. I'll, I'll say something controversial, maybe not to the people listening here, but to probably a lot of people. I think I know what you're going to say, and I don't know if I agree with it. Gaga's music is so much better than Beyonce. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say Gaga is more of a performer than Beyonce. Then ah, I was gonna really be like, whoa, 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 whoa. different. Yeah. I I don't uh, think I, I don't think there's a better performer out there than Beyonce. But Gaga's music is like I like how you call her Gaga as well. Gaga. <laughs> uh, that's because I get I remember being super drunk and saying it once. Are we gonna listen to Lady Gaga? And people are like, that's not how you say it. And you've said it since. Yeah. Um. Ah. Uh, I. I think it's all a preference thing. I'm gonna go see Aerosmith in the Black Rose. That's probably not for you. Uh, I'm out. I'm good on that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like me stuck between a bunch of sixty-year-olds, yeah. and I'm I am good on that. That yeah. sounds like not a lot of fun for me. Uh, I got to be so honest. That Name doesn't sound three Aerosmith songs. I bet you, like I I know three Aerosmith songs, but I couldn't name three off a title. Name three. Songs by the Eagles. They only have two good songs. So what are they? I don't even know. That's how good they are. Name. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we hold did on, this. On. We did this when we were we were driving to. We were driving. We were in New Zealand. Okay, we were yeah. driving from uh, city to city. We were driving to Taronga, and uh, 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 say I, it again. I can't roll my R's. Taronga. Bingo. You're welcome. Okay, and we were driving from Auckland. Which had the best chocolate chip cookie in the world, by the way. Fuck, Just want to put the name of that place. The, the Cookie Farm. Yo, we dude. googled it. Yo, Cookie uh, Farm. Yeah. If you're listening, send us some cookies. God. We will pay for them. God damn it. Damn oh those my. chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> without a doubt, the best one. That yeah, I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was kind of nuts. Um, and, and no, but there are no nuts in those cookies. Facts, but also like the cookie was like giant and, and thick with and, three C's and warm. He fresh baked them every morning. And, yeah. And all he had was what he had. So you bought him once he run at, ran out. He was out of that cookie for the day. Dude, I loved that city, by the way. Me too. Okay. Um, but so we're driving, and my dad's like, he plays one song. What What was the? By the I, the the bet. What's their What's their big one hit? Isn't it? Big one hit, dude. Wait, are you kidding me right now? Look, we went over this. Don't big one hit. Now I'm not the hugest Eagles fan. Okay, so I'm not sitting biggest. there being like you got to, but like big, biggest Eagles fan. What did I say? Hugest. Huge. <laughs> uh, I'm not the biggest uh, Eagles fan. Like I'm not a dude. Like we gotta listen to the Eagles. As a matter of fact, I'll. I've heard them so much. Like I like their B sides more than their hits. Right. And I've heard, but I've heard them so much. I I change their hits when they come on now. But who sings Hotel California? The Eagles. Okay, that's my. Well, that's the one big hit. That's what I know. That's the one I was looking for. So. <laughs> one big hit. We were. I we, played we were, his great. I played the Eagles' greatest hits, right? And I'm like, Jacob, you don't think you know Eagles songs, but I'm gonna play ten for you right. I'm gonna play ten for you right now. You're gonna know eight out of these ten. And he's like, okay. He he didn't know any of them. He knew two, not including Hotel California. So yeah. three. Yeah. And I couldn't even tell you the names of the other two songs. Okay. I just know them because of their tune. Tell me this. That's it. Name. I know you can name three Beatles songs because. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Beat them into your head when he was a kid. Also, name three the greatest band ever. Name three. Ooh, here we go. Name three songs by the Who. Ooh, I don't know if I have that one. Wait, hmm. Did that? Did name, they? Did they sing that sing that song? Who are you? The one that's yep. gonna start a CSI Miami. Yep. Yeah. yeah okay. It's crazy. That's how you know that song. <laughs> that's how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I knew it, but then yeah, I also yeah. like know it from that. And yeah. remember how much Grandma and I like CSI Miami? Yeah. So that that song yeah. was just beaten in my head, Hilarious. also from that show. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> that might be all I got. Name three Rolling Stone songs. That I could again. Here's the thing. I know three songs by all of these bands, just not by the name. Yeah. yeah. Uh um. Fuck. Is that Rolling Stones? I don't think it is. Name three Weezer songs. Uh, Pork and Beans. Um. Oh shit! I should know this one. Yeah, I'm um, giving the. This is an easy layup. This for is you. this is an easy layup. I haven't listened to Weezer in a long time. We're going to in the car when we get out of here. Yeah, just I'm, to, I'm, you need a refresher course. I do. Ooh, ah. I'm in for that. Um, I saw them at Coachella too. They were there, dude. We saw them at the fucking whiskey right after the whiskey the, a go go, dude. Oh my right God. after right after the Blue album, right? They took a little break, and they came back and they were going to release the Green album. But they went to the whiskey and they played the blue album from fucking top to bottom and walked off stage. That's awesome. Me, dude, can I tell you something? Okay, this was pre me meeting your mom. So I was, but I was driving the minivan. I was a single dad at the time. And um, we met this girl at the whiskey. And I was like, fuck yeah, we're having a good time. We're talking. And we're like, you wanna go to a party? She was like, yeah. I go, you wanna ride with me? And she goes, yeah. And I forgot. It was not out of my norm to be driving in a minivan with car seats in it. Right. She was not expecting to meet somebody at the Weezer concert at the Whiskey, who was taking her out to the a Toyota Sienna with, with some three cars. with three car seats in the back. Yo, she changed her mind about going to that party real quick. Oh yeah, she did. As soon as we hit the parking lot, she was like, "Is this your car?" I was like, "Yeah, I should have told you I drive a minivan." She was like, "With car seats?" And I was like, "Yeah." She was like, "I'll get a ride." I was like, from who? She was like, don't worry about it. I said, yeah. "Okay." You didn't see her at that party. No, dude. Not, no, <laughs> dude. No. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, ah, I'm really mad actually at myself that I can't name two more Weezer songs. I know way more than three Weezer songs for sure. Say it ain't so. Oh my God! Yeah, that's way the... oh, just like Buddy oh, Holly. Oh, oh, I oh, can't do it anymore. We won't be able to monetize this. Yeah, um, um, there's a, there's a lot. Okay, name a band that you like that you think that I might I maybe should know three songs. Or band or an artist. I won't know three J. Cole songs. Yeah, I won't test you on that. You wouldn't know three Kendrick songs. You wouldn't know three Drake songs. You wouldn't know three Cordae songs. All the artists that I can think of in my library right now, th name three My Chemical Romance songs. Oh, Black Parade, um, Helena. Great. Um, what is that? House of Wolves. I love Great. House That's of a Wolves. great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name three Fall Out Boy songs. Um... Uh, dance, dance, good. Uh, sugar, I'm going down swinging. Just sugar, I'm going down. But yes, okay. yes. And uh, how about my song? No, what you do? Okay. In the door. Do you know what that song? Well my my what is it? My song's not what you do in the dark. Yeah. Um, I'm writing a parody to that. Oh uh, yeah, it's called My Friends Light Their Farts in the Dark. <laughs> So light them up, up, and we're gonna shoot a video of just people lighting their farts on fire. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a big hit, dude. It's yeah, that seems valid enough. Yeah, me and Chelsea Lynn were talking about doing it. She's great. She's so funny. She's super funny. Um, all right, let me get back to this weekend about Kane's Ballroom. Yep. And what an honor it is. Um, to be at this point doing this with you. Mm -hmm. Um. Where, when you walk into places like that that have history, there's some crazy names on that wall. Well, like how does like I know how it makes me feel at this point in my life. Uh, I I probably feel the same way. Like I didn't know going into it what Kane's truly was and how legendary it was. So going into it, I didn't know what to expect. But then to go in and see all of those signatures from years and years of people coming through, like that's pretty legendary. Like it's something I can already add to a resume that is short, but pretty filled. Let me ask you another question, man. I know how I feel also at this point because I have done shows in front of two people, right? Right. Y y I told you I did that Christmas party once where this woman hired me to go to her art studio. Yeah. And it was just me, her, and her assistant. They saw me at the comedy store and they're like, you wanna do the Christmas party? I'm like, yeah, the Christmas party was her and her assistant. Nobody was there. No, was there more people invited that didn't show up, or nobody? Nope. There was just no, no was, microphone. Me and I ended up sitting down in the middle of them and just talking to him. I was like, "Do I have to stand up? Can't you just ask me some questions?" Like it was me and Gavin. I meant Gavin go first. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, sacrifice. So I know, like, 
I still get chills when I walk on stage and there there is a people are clapping and excited to be there because my brain still has references reference points to like, oh dude, this is like you know where that you came from. Right. And so when you walk on stage, dude, you're getting legit some people are standing up and clapping when you're walking on stage. Yeah. Like where like it's pretty how, awesome. Yeah, how's that how's that make you feel? Well, it, it it definitely makes me feel good because you know, for a long time I felt like I lived in a shadow of me, of you. Yeah. But we've gotten to a point where in the last year people aren't saying, "Oh my god, you're Josh Wolf's son." People are saying, "Oh my god, you're Jacob Wolf." And I'm yeah. like, "Whoa, that's different." Like when we were in Australia, not a single Australia and New Zealand, not a single one of you guys called me Josh Wolf's son. Yeah. Every single person was like, oh, my God, that's Jacob, or that's Jacob Wolf. It's like, yo. And that's on the other side of the fucking planet. Yeah. Like, that, that to me, is insane. So I, it's, I, it's been pretty, uh, some pretty surreal moments. Like, we did a 1,000 people Fortitude Music Hall when yeah. we were in Australia. Second night we were there. I, I was bonkers. Yeah. So I'm like, really, I'm really cognizant, dude, of 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 not wanting you to be in my shadow, right? And but also like understanding that that's how people know you, and so like I, I know you don't get offended by when people are doing that because yeah. it's natural, but it's also natural to not want to be not to want to be known as you by your name. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I, and I know that is, and that's why you know it's just a process of figuring out. Um, what it is that's going to be my your thing my brand or thing right something yeah. like that yeah um but this is a good start good foot in the door for sure yeah i'll tell you something else dude at 26 i i, I don't think you're alone with not knowing exactly who you are yet there's yeah. there at 26 it's a rare person i'll tell you what dude you know how much i like miley cyrus right yeah one of the reasons i like miley cyrus is because i'm fascinated by how somebody that young and female in this business is so confident and assure of themselves and who they are. She is fascinating to me and gives zero fucks. Yeah. Like, and when I say female, not that females, not that women are weaker or whatever, but they get a whole lot more in different types of criticism yeah, than we do. And 100%. so they, we, we still get criticism, but they, they're getting different types of criticism. Right. And so for her to be so self-assured and confident and you know I, I love watching videos of her or interviews because i'm like oh, how the fuck has she figured it out that quick so you know I, like i don't i don't ever want you to feel like you sh not, i'm not saying you shouldn't know who you are but it's i just figured it out for me eight years ago right it's right. a process mm -hmm. and it's even it's an even harder process under a, a microscope. microscope yeah Absolutely. Because it's hard for you to go through growing pains or to try shit or to, you know, pre-social media, dude, one of the reasons when I moved, I think I've told you this before, one of the reasons I moved to cities where nobody knew me is because I wasn't going in with any preconceived, nobody had any preconceived notion of who I was. Right. No one had any expectations. So when I went to Seattle, there were some things I changed about myself. Be, and your friends who have known you for a decade are it's harder for you to change around them because they're like what the fuck are you doing who, who the fuck do you think you are right but you go to a new city you're like i don't want to be this dude anymore I right want, i want not like you're changing but you're trying to give yourself a fresh start uh, yeah right and allowing yourself to grow you're not trying to change an identity you're just trying to modify it yeah man yeah and, and, or, start, or not modify it but still find it yeah and that's fine yeah sometimes you have to trial and error and experiment about what you think and who you want to be and sometimes you experiment and you go that's still not who i want to be and you try yeah. again have you been uh, like the more you are out here doing this do you find it harder or easier or neither to start to really develop who you are do you think it's harder because people are looking at you all the time and yeah. they have an idea of who you th they think you are yeah i i think that sometimes that's always the like the start of the hardest part because like especially when you know people think you know watching this and when they see us uh, on lives or just meet us you know we're we're very 
we're people people yeah, right like yeah. we're you know our our meet and greets are free we don't charge anybody to just come take a photo with us yeah. when a lot of other people do because we're just happy that you guys left your house to come see us a hundred percent like it's we're we're grateful that we're on your guys's list to leave your house to come sit down for over an hour and watch yeah. us talk i, I like agree. that that's that is, we're very grateful for that. Because so, honestly, I just told you who's on my list. Rage Against the Machine and Miley Cyrus. That's who I'm leaving my house to go it. see. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that that we are on anyone's list that does not escape us every single night. Yeah, so to start out, thank you. Yeah, huge. But also with that comes, because we are very open about who we are in our lives as well. So people think they, they know us and can talk to us a certain way. Yeah. Like especially when we're on stage. Like there are people that there's a lot of like, it's like you'll say something and it's like yeah man or just like people will come out and say something or try to make a comment about you or me while we're on stage and it's it's become easier to really just kind of like not yeah. say anything to it and just kind of nod it off and not worry about it. But at the start, it's hard because it's like I understand you guys are excited to be here and it, it it's. You know, it takes getting used to, dude. Yeah, and it's like you, th we, you know, you you think it, we know each other, but we really don't. And it's just this pre again, it's a preconceived notion of, oh, they think everything's funny, so I'm gonna scream something out and try and fuck with them or fuck them up. And yeah. Sometimes it does really fuck me up that I can't think about what I'm gonna say next because I just I really want to address the, the out of pocket shit that was just said, but I know it's best not to give that person that attention they're looking for. Dude, it's also look, man. Stand up is not easy. No. And so right now you're just still trying to figure out who I am on stage. Yeah, what you say, how you stand, how you want to talk. And so for someone to scream something out, that's disrupting enough, disruptive enough. But also, like, it takes a while and it takes a certain skin. Like, you have to develop a certain thick skin. Right. To, and that's not something that happens overnight where you, you nothing somebody says gets to me emotionally mm -hmm. right it may elicit a response from me but it's nothing gets to me emotionally because one dude you cannot I, what i've learned is you can't blame them Th they are reacting to what we've put out there for them to react to i guess that's true do you know what i mean yep so 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 it would be one thing if we didn't share Shit. one of the beautiful things about the people who come to the show is they feel like they know us right right it, but that every positive reaction has a negative reaction right and so the the positive to that is they ha they have an emotional connection to us which i love and right. i and i love them sharing things with us mm -hmm. in meet and greets and our meet right. and greets are long and take a while because everybody and i love this by the way Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Hey, your son is like my son. Or I remember, and that means that we're making an emotional connection, and I fucking love that. And I hope that never changes, people tell us. But also, because they feel like they know you, they feel like they can say anything to you. Right, that's the preconceived notion, yeah. is that that's what gets to be a little hard sometimes. I totally get it. I totally get it. it, it um, but just know that they are, this is the perspective I look at it. They're not reacting in a way that is out of pocket with what we put out online. Except for that one person in Nashville who screamed out, said, how was it raising an autistic child talking about me? And then came up to me after the show trying to brag about the joke. They're like, yeah, I'm the one who screamed that. And I was like, and? But they're, they're just, like, well, they're like, well, it was funny. And I go, not really relevant or funny whatsoever. Like, yeah, just kind of ridiculous. Like, and they're like, oh, okay. And then just well, like, well, have a great night. And then walked away. And I was like, you too. Like, you just gotta put that in your back pocket, dude. But yeah, but the, 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 no, that one I did. That's why we didn't we didn't respond nah, to that. Nah. But for her to for them to come up after the show and be like, oh yeah, that was funny, right? And I was like, here's the deal. Well, how, how would have how would you have dealt with that? Because for me, I was like, not really, and also not really relevant. But you have a great night. Like that, I, I thought that was the nicest thing, honestly, I could have said because it, it, it's, I could have said something not nice whatsoever. But I chose to just kind of slip it under the rug as best as I could. Again, I've done this a long time. And so what I know is there I can tell the difference between somebody who's trying to be malicious and somebody who's really just thinks that they're trying to add something funny. Right, right, right. But that 
Sh- that person that, was really that one. That one does. That's not even adding anything funny. Like you uh, making. Fun I of know that who was... you and I don't find that funny, and nobody in the room found that funny, by the way, either. <laughs> but but you also have to be able to, you know, like okay, like at Canes, there was that woman who was talking a lot. Good lord! But here's what I'm. I've been on stage long enough to know she's trying to be additive. She really thinks that we're friends which is fine because that's how we project ourselves right Right. she really thinks that they she knows us and she's really just trying to she was having a good time right and so i've been on stage long enough where i can tell oh this isn't somebody who's being an asshole right this is somebody who's here having a good time with their friends so a lot of times i'll try to let them talk themselves out i won't i won't address them which i didn't until the end yeah and then and and, but here's the thing, even with her, it was like, she wasn't trying to be malicious, but then when you told her to be quiet, she was like, I will not. That's when I told her, I changed my tone. Yeah. I go, no, 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 no. You have to be quiet. You're bothering the people around you. Yeah, yeah. And that's really the line that I draw. But, man, our, the people who come to our shows, dude, are... Good people. If you Little. listen to the people who work at, at the venues we play, they're always like, yo, your crowds are so cool. The mo- the biggest problem they have is that somebody's having too much fun and being loud, like this woman was. And so I'm not going to chastise her for that, it, it, unless it gets to a point where it was a little unmanageable. Right. right. So, like, the the autism comment, I, if I was going to address it, I would have addressed it, you know, it, you mean live on stage? No, no, after. Afterwards. Had she come up, like... She came up to me while I was selling merch after the show and was like, hey, did you like my joke? And I was like, what joke? Yeah. Like, there was no joke behind it. You just made a rude comment I for no reason. I would have made a joke about it. I would have been like, instead of saying what joke, you made a rude comment, I might have couched it the same way, but with laughter behind it. I would have been like, if that was a joke you need to work on your punchlines. I would have laughed and high-fived them, but I wouldn't have made them feel like, this is me now. Yeah. I wouldn't have made them feel like, oh, hey, asshole, because that's not what their intention was. I think about this with jokes too, dude. Yeah, okay. Okay, and here's what I think about with jokes. You know, everybody is so reactive about topics or words you use or accents and I get it. I get the time we're in, but to to put the us all under the same umbrella that every time you tell a joke about somebody that's not in your like if I'm white and I make a joke about somebody who's Mexican, right? Or I'm thin and I make fun of somebody who's enormous, or you know, I'm rich and I make whatever. By the way, these are not jokes that I make, but I'm just saying. <laughs> they it's about intent. And here's what I would say also, dude. Ready? Here's why I don't believe that there should be people, there are groups that you shouldn't make fun of. Because are you telling me that, let's just say, I'm just going to say, because I used them before, Mexican people, right? Are you, obviously there are things not to joke about. But are you saying that as a white person or anybody who's not Mexican, can't make fun of Mexicans. What that is saying is, are you telling me that group is so frail? Are you assuming that this group of people is so frail? This is what gets me. It's almost when you're saying you can't joke about them to me and my point of view, it's condescending to me. You're saying, Oh, this person, they can't, they can't handle the joke. Now you got to go back with intent, right? And guys like me, I'm, I'm making fun of, if I was going to do it, I'm making fun of giant stereotypes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Giant stereo. But are you, are you telling me that this group is so frail that they need to be set off into a... They can't handle the joke? I think that's insulting. To me, that's insulting. Yo, as a Jew, make... Yo, dude, I, I'm. you can't make a Holocaust joke unless it's funny, and then you can make it. That's it. It's intent. If your intent is to be funny... You know, and some jokes aren't funny, but that doesn't mean they're offensive. That just means they're not funny. Right. And so, like, I go back with this. That's how I differentiate with the audience member, too. 
I look at intent. Are you trying, like, a lot of times, like, and usually it's two groups. It's either a white woman over the age of 40 Bingo. who's talking a lot at their table, and then when you tell them to quiet down, they get indignant that you're telling them what to do. Or a bro who's trying to be assholey funny. That's usually the two groups, right? That that I will be like, well, I'm going to have to stomp this out. Right. Right? But you got to look at intent, I think. And that's what I would do with that autism. You know what I mean? It's yeah. up to you to decide. Yeah. All right. But I don't want to, just like I wouldn't want to be penalized for a joke. Maybe it wasn't funny, but my intent was to be funny. But it was just so irrelevant. I agree. That's the main reason for me. Like, it was so irrelevant to whatever, like, whatever we were talking about on stage to just blurt something out like that. For for absolutely no reason, and they come up to me after the show, yeah. after I purposely didn't acknowledge you, and you know that to try and get your point across about your. But she was trying to make a connection with you, dude. That's all. I I'm with you. I'm with you. Not the best way. Maybe not the best <sighs> communicator in the world. Sh obviously not. But when she came up to you, she was happy to see you. Yeah, sure, but she was like, "Did you hear?" Like, it was more just she was worried about if I heard her joke and I thought she was funny. Yeah, but that's Which what I mean. I, but yeah, intent, I guess yeah, intent, I, intent. I guess that's right. You know? Yeah, better joke, but yeah, just also, and also you can say exactly what you said, smile while you're saying it, give them a high five, and you're getting your point across, but you're letting them know no hard feelings. Yeah. I appreciate you coming. There was a little bit of hard feelings. I know there were. <laughs> not going to lie. There was definitely a little bit of hard feelings after that one. But, dude, look. Let's use Canes as an example. That woman who came to our show. This woman had sent me a message. I'm not going to say her name. or, But she sent me a message on a Tuesday. That her son had died Sunday. Mm-hmm. She was still coming to the show because her son had bought her the tickets for Mother's Day. And he was going to come, and it was what she thought he would have wanted. Right. And that talk after the show, uh -huh. I do, she showed me videos of him. And yeah. She said she waited to the end, and she was like, um, I said, I'm, you know, do you mind if she said, do you mind if we spend a couple minutes? I go, no, whatever you want. She goes, can I just tell you some stories about my son? Mm -hmm. Yo, dude, that type of and, and connection, like in that woman who came up also at that same show, but her dad. Oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah. woman who said her dad only had about six months to live. Yeah. There was another woman who came up and said her her, her brother had just passed away too. Yo, dude. A lot, I was, a, a lot of those actually this weekend. But But this reminds me, right? I told you this on the ride home where I I was a little stoned, but <laughs> I still told you this. That, you did. You know, every now and then I question what I'm doing, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I have a, what the fuck am I doing? I'd like to do something that makes a difference. And this woman and these people who come and are, who are going through some shit and talk about how the laughs that we provide mean something to them. Mm -hmm. It changed my. It changes my perspective. Right. I had a fifteen-year-old tell me that I was his idol last night. Yeah, dude. It was pretty crazy. It's a lot of responsibility. I, I was like, yo, well, because he. It's funny because he came up to me and he was like, uh, and he was like, yo, I'm kind of shaking right now. I was like, what's up, bro? And he was like, I, I was like, are you here by yourself? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, and he was like, guess how old I am? And I looked him up and down once, and I go, well, I'm gonna go ahead because you asked me that question and because you're wearing a football shirt but not like a football team yeah like a high school logo football yeah. shirt yeah i know you're in high school yeah because i did the same thing when i was in high school i wore my high school shit everywhere right you know like everybody did so i get that i was like so i'm gonna guess you're for sure in high school and he was like and he was like i came a little unprepared i go all good i it's uh, you know sometimes you got to do what you got to do and i was like so 16 to 18 he's like i'm 15 and i was like fuck yeah man i go how did you get in here and he goes i got he said these words, I got a permit, and my grandmother is waiting in the car. That is amazing. And I was like, dude. what? I was like, so your grandmother just sat in her car for the entire show waiting for you to get out? Fucking she was like, He was like, yeah. And I just came in and sat in here by myself. And I was like, no shit. That is awesome. But, like, yeah, shout out shout out that kid. Dude, humbling, fucking, dude. Yeah, super it's, dope. It's super humbling. 
it's crazy that he said I was his idol. He was like, I saw you with your dad on just doing a bunch of different things. And he was like, I want to be just like that guy. And I was like, that is, I, I have no words for that. Yeah, man. It's pretty I, amazing. The, these last couple months. I hope he posts that photo so I can. I'm sure he will. So and and that guitar. It. We've been giving away a guitar. Oh, I, yeah, that I, kid I last get, night also. I didn't get to give one away at Kane's because they, my, the guitar they shipped didn't make it until the next day. But we've been giving a guitar away at the end of every show. And um, we gave it last night to a kid named Tristan. Who, who was a 19-year-old who also came and sat by himself. The whole show. The entire show in the theater in, like, the third row. So dope. Dude. At 19, I, I wouldn't have had the confidence to go to a fucking comedy show by dude, myself. at 26, I don't have the confidence to go see a movie by myself. Yeah, dude. It, it Do you was know what I'm impressive. saying? Like, it was I, I don't even th ever think about it. So you know what? I think a movie right now sounds like a good thing by myself. Never once has that thought ever crossed my mind. No. It just doesn't. Like, it, it is, has, has been, has being out on the road and being in the public eye, has that, helped your confidence or hurt it because sometimes it can hurt it by comments online and making you aware of <sighs> things about yourself that you don't want to be aware of i've had those comments since i was 15 dude. yeah since you were in the limelight people have been coming after me and that's not your fault that's yeah. just people well, who kinda don't it is my fault. no it's not you know why it's not because it's not your fault that people don't have too much time on their fucking hands yeah. to not be bettering themselves, and instead they're going after random people they don't know online. But I am like, I'm putting uh, your business on blast. But guess what? You did. I never said it wasn't okay. Okay. You always. Uh, he. I want to clear this up. He always asked me if it was cool if he could tell a joke, and he would always tell me what the joke was and what the punchline was, and if I didn't like it, yeah. he wouldn't tell it until I said it was all right. So I'm gonna clear that up. Anything you ever put online, I said yes to. So I subject myself to that as well. Okay. Again, I'm the indirect breadwinner of this family. I'm the reason there was food on the table True. when I was a kid. So it, it can't, it's can't good. Deny it. It's all good. And it's now giving me a platform at an age to where I can do something with it. Yeah. So, but, you know, you were on Shark After Dark. We got cut tweets and oh, crazy dude. shit for that because Fuck. because during Shark Week Those for two years. people wanted to kill me. Legitimately, oh like legitimately, you were getting death threats on Twitter because you had a shark show on Shark Week that wasn't fully educational. And people Yo, were dude. pissed. I dude. forgot how the vitriol I got. Bro. You're not a scientist. Get off of Shark Week. People you were fuck. so mad God. that he tried to bring a little comedy to it. Yo. But you know, you know what? Eventually they did go. Boring and educational and hired somebody else. And guess what? They hired the perfect fucking guy for that. So let me tell you something, dude. First of all, Shark Week. That was fun. That might have been outside of the Josh Wolf show, which was so much fun. Number one. I got to tell you, honestly, I feel so lucky. The things that I've done, starting with Chelsea. You've done some pretty outstanding things. But starting have been fun. I've been really lucky to just have fun. Shark After Dark. With Bob dressed up as Bob the O'Shack. fucking shark. And remember, my Hasselhoff man. came in. I have a back-to-back -back photo with David Hasselhoff with our arms crossed. It's yeah. one of my favorite photos ever. But he and we wrote him a uh, theme. St oh yeah, the, no, that that wasn't that wasn't Hasselhoff. That was that guy Max from The Wanted. Yo, dude, Hasselhoff straight up sang a, a song for us. Oh, oh, that's right. He Hasselhoff said, did sing a we song. We wrote him a Shark After Dark intro. Oh, song. that's right. We wrote multiple songs. And then when the Wanted was kind of big, yeah, that dude, Max, Max came think, in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I was the original Left Shark. Yeah, you were, dude. So before Left Shark, Katy Perry's Left Shark, it was me and Bob Oshak as backup shark dancers for Max, and I was the original Left Shark. I just want everybody to know that. But yeah, that was pretty fun. How funny but was also, Bob the Shark? Oh, Bob the Shark. <sighs> I've uh, Bob Oshak, if you're seeing this, we miss you, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Not only that, if you have never seen me interviewing Tara Reid on Shark After Dark, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to say. Why that clip doesn't have a gazillion views, I have no idea. Just go look up Tara Reid's Shark After Dark interview. I'm not going to say anything else. Oh, we got to post that again, dude. Just, I, you should watch that, it. That. It's worth it. It doesn't make sense to me. How that video is not completely Yo, dude, viral. You remember when Cutlet stabbed me with a knife? Yeah. You remember we had Stone Cold Steve Austin on that show too, I'm pretty sure. Yo, so yeah, we had Stone Cold Stunner. I you know how tempted I was to ask him to Stone Cold Stun me? 
I was like, yo, should I? I was like, should I? We interviewed him. I was like, yo, should I take this opportunity to ask Stone Cold Steve Austin if he will Stone Cold stun me right now? Like, I was so I was so tempted, but I didn't. I took the photo instead. Super nice guy. Like, what a great, what a, yeah, yeah. what a great experience that was, and 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 what a great. Uh, it, I learned so much because it was a live show, and so doing yeah. live oh interviews. Oh my god, that's right. Doing live interviews and things would go wrong, mm-hmm. but Cudlitz and Josh McDermott, mm-hmm. who were on, on The Walking Dead at the time, and um, Cudlitz was Abraham, and Josh McDermott's character, his name was Eugene. That's right. And so they were on, and both buddies of mine. Josh is Josh started out as a comic. I don't know if all of you know that. Really funny, dark, 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 dark. Um, and they he came played, on. He plays. He played Eugene really yeah. well. And they came on, and there was a dude who made shark bite proof suit, and he sent us a video of his arm being in a tiger shark's mouth. And um, so, and he was like, "Yeah, the, the teeth don't puncture." And so, pre-show, <laughs> have I told you this? Pre-show. Okay, pre-show. We have the shark. It looks like chain mail from, you know. Right? like Yeah, like from like medieval times. Like yeah. It looks like it something looks, that the knights would wear under their armor. Yeah, it looked like what, what uh, 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 Bilbo was wearing in the final, you know, in The Hobbit. The, 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 the dwarf, what's his name? Arkenstone. Mark, D- Merkin? His name wasn't Merkin. Huh? Thorn. Yeah, Merkin isn't his name. Merkin the dwarf. <laughs> Not Merkin the dwarf, more like Merkin these dwarfs. Like Jesus, oh my God! Definitely, definitely, J.R. Tolkien did not name one of the dwarfs Merkin. <laughs> oh okay. my God! But so it was one of those chainmail, and before the show, we're like, okay, so should we test the knives? Because the because we wanted to test the suit, mm-hmm. and um. The guy was like, we probably shouldn't test a knife. And I'm like, why not? He goes, well, I've never tested it on a knife, so I don't know if it works. And I was like, well, then we should definitely test it. He goes, no, but if we test it and if it doesn't work, I'm not going to make it on the show. So let's just do it live. And I was like, yeah, but if it doesn't work, you get stabbed. Yeah, and the director was like, this is going to be good TV. Go ahead. No no rehearsal. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, and then you had Abraham from The Walking Dead, who if you watch The Walking Dead, no is an aggressive character he's not like yeah he's well got, he wasn't playing abraham on the show right but you know cutlets cutlets whenever we see him he's never just regular michael he always has to bust into some character which i love by the way like he's super fucking funny and but, when he does it like when he busts just in his in his listen, shit dude, he was so careful mcdermott not as so mcdermott was like the trying to shark like shark tooth guy the shark the guy, shark suit guy the deal was I was putting the the chest piece on and the shark tooth guy was doing the hand part. So what we did with McDermott is we had him take an ice pick and go through the guy's hands mm-hmm. and hard and fast. He was guy, 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 and he would hit the middle of the hand every now and then. It never punctured the suit, so it didn't draw blood. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't help with blunt force. Yeah, probably has a br- massive bruise on the top of his oh, hand. Dude, he, sh- he shattered the dude's hand. Oh! He shattered his hand. He broke it. He finally the guy had to pull back. And it was his suit. So he was trying to take it as much as he could because he didn't want to, you know, he wanted to be able to sell his suit as perfect. But nothing can take away the blunt force with that, right? Yeah, okay. So he broke his suit. So cut, uh, Cutlets goes to me. And the other thing is we had to, he had to stab me on this side, which was where my fucking heart is because that's yeah. where the cameras were set up. Yep. <clears throat> not, so, a, not a great move on production so on that part. He goes like this, and just a little bit. This is my, it's probably on TV too. He just stabs me a little, because we didn't rehearse. So he just gives me a little like that, and he looks at me, and I go, "You can do it harder." This is live TV. Yeah. And he does it again, and I go, well, "You can do it harder." And the third time he does it, the knife bends. He fucking. Yeah, and, uh, but I, now no puncture. But a huge bruise, if I remember correctly. Massive bruise. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you did have a pretty large bruise on your chest after that. What was your favorite? Because you were on set every... What was your favorite part? Do you remember your favorite episode besides the Tara Reid or... <sighs> Nothing tops Tara Reid for me. Well, that when we did Naked After Dark, you get to hold that giant snake. 
Yeah. I and the sloth. Did you hold the sloth? Yeah, I did. I, Naked After Dark was pretty cool. He also did, yeah, so he did another show on Discovery. So Naked and Afraid, right? So he did like a like a late night TV show with that, but he always had- After the, show, live. Yeah, he always had the contestants on or sometimes did. No, did you always have them? Always. Yo, there was one, there was one duo of people- that the whole episode were just yelling at each other <laughs> because she was like, you bit that lizard's head off. And he was like, I was going to die if I didn't. And it was, God. She was like, you didn't have to bite his head off. You could have just killed him. And he was like, I did by biting his head off. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Listening to those two people bicker was, that one made me laugh. Do you remember, and this is on YouTube, too. I would go watch this. Do you remember when I ate the live cockroach? Yep. Me and Michelle Beadle? Yep. And that you also eat like a live like larva. You've eaten like goat brain. You've eaten maggots. A, you've I eaten eat. a lot of gross shit. Yeah, dude. But because for that show, they were like, "How are we gonna make it interesting?" I was like, "Well, I'll eat what they ate." That's a yeah, it's a yeah, good it was idea. Pretty gross. You didn't have to bite the head off of a live lizard. Though, yeah, I'll tell you that. Tell me, we should probably get going here, right? Yeah, we probably started about an hour ago. Hour seven. Yeah, we should probably wrap up. There's a bunch of things that I wanted to talk about. We had a great superhero talk though at the beginning, which was great. So that killed some time. And right. I, I, I do. We didn't answer one question. I want you to answer about is, is this is this experience helping or hurting your confidence or what what it's uh, what it's doing for you personally? I, I think I'm so I think getting on stage is really building up a lot of my confidence because, like you know me as a kid, I, I stage fright. Yeah, couldn't even do school projects without yeah. shaking. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, when we when I first got on stage with you uh, about two years ago in Minnesota, yeah, shaking. Yeah, I remember. Right? I I have to like sit down sometimes because I'm just a little too nervous. Yeah. But now, I don't do that. Like it, it, my confidence not only on stage has increased, but the confidence that it has instilled in me just in daily life is helping a lot, uh, like immensely. I hope also what it shows you is that fears are 99% of the time made up in your brain. Right. You're scared of something just because you've never done it or it's unknown. And then you do it and you're like, what the fuck was I scared of? Yeah. So it's, it's definitely, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm just riding the ride right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I'm just, I'm just in it for, you know, I for whatever's in it. I have to tell you. And I, and I, I probably said this to you maybe five times already this trip. I just love being out here with you. It's a good time. I love being out. I, I, I would love, I would love to, you know, we're going to be in Texas more. And I was, so I'd love to see your brother more out here with us. And I would love to see your sister come out, mm -hmm. but this has really changed my, not only just trajectory, but like my desire. Right. It's reinvigorated me uh artistically and emotionally in what i do and um you know somebody was like the fucking nepotism and i my deal with nepotism is this everybody who the fuck else am i gonna give the opportunity to like i i get people talking about nepotism it just sounds like you're bitter yeah the truth of the matter is That's true look man if i gave him an opportunity and it wasn't working and I told them this going in. This may not work. And, sure. and in that case, you're still welcome to come, but I'm not going to throw you on stage. Yeah. And, and so, like, it's the same thing, like, um, when I hear people talk about got, comics who have been on Rogan's podcast or people like myself who are on Chelsea's podcast, a Chelsea show, and people like, if it wasn't for Chelsea, you wouldn't. Yeah, probably. Maybe. But there were a lot of comics who got opportunities and didn't do anything with them. So... Look, man, you may get an opportunity because that's what life is, dude. Who you know, your relationships provide you opportunities. It's up to you to make the best of those opportunities. True. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But like somebody was like, don't you feel like you should have given the opportunity to somebody who's been grinding or yeah, this is my life. This is my son. True. Yeah. And I, if I'm going to give an opportunity, the people I love are at the top of the list. They get asked first. Yep. hundred percent. I, I have zero apologies for that, you know, and As so should be. yeah, and I and and doing this podcast with you also, man, it's been uh, it's pretty amazing. It's so, pretty great, and we're only just getting started. That's right, and you you didn't mention in this entire podcast, which is 
why I haven't changed it. You didn't mention me wearing sunglasses once. I mentioned it before we started recording, and then you didn't say you were taking them off and or keeping them on, so I just assumed you were keeping them on. And, uh, yeah, I just let it run. I really appreciate that. I mean, listen, I thought I, that, fe- I felt like it was a pointless pullout because I like, you know, pointless like, pullout was my nickname in high school. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> but so it was it was a, it was pointless to point out because yeah. I felt like everybody already saw it. And everybody knows it. For those of you watching, you'll notice it right away and you'll say, why is he wearing sunglasses indoors? And then you'll say, that's Josh Wolf. Listen. I That's thought what the sunglasses is. with the sunflower were the way to go. Or inside. You don't wear sunglasses. It's like wearing sunglasses at night. Yeah, dude. But you know what? I, I was going to do a bit, but you never said anything, and then I forgot I had them on. <laughs> you had a bit planned? What was the bit? I forget. It, just, it was yeah. at the beginning at the top of the show. I thought you'd say <laughs> something. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com uh, for tour dates uh, and where we'll be next. Tell next- them where we're going to be. Uh, tonight, you will, this will be too late, but tonight we are in Wichita at Temple Live. We're super excited, so thank you guys. We'll, we'll see you there in a couple hours. Uh, next week, on Wednesday, we are in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we are in Royal Oak, Michigan for what is almost a sold-out weekend. So with those little tickets left, guys, please come say what's up. What else? Um, what like uh, the week after? My, Miami, June third and fourth. Oh yeah, the week after that we're off, and then uh, and then the week after that, first weekend in June, we are in Miami Ooh. for two nights. Yep. So we're very excited about that. And um, then at the end of June, you know where we are? One of our favorite clubs, Florida again. Columbus. Ooh, we're back in C bus at the end of June. Fuck yeah. Columbus, funny bone. So. And then we're again in Florida somewhere in August, and but again, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Um, Joshwolf comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on Twitter, or I'm sorry, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, hey, and hey, everybody, it, have I said this before? Can you download, rate, and subscribe? Oh, and leave yeah. a comment. It would mean so much to us. You know, um, we're going to start going on other people's podcasts because that's really the way to build up yep. a pod. But w- the the comments on iTunes and Spotify mm-hmm. bring us to the top of a lot of lists. Yep. It would mean a lot if you could uh, throw us on there. That would be super dope. Well, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Shout out to Jared again. Thank you, brother, again for letting us come in here and, and use your incredible space. Um, definitely, definitely a one-of-a-kind space, and it was a whole bunch of fun. And um, I, I want to, before I say this, do you want to say what the name of your podcast is? What a great name for that the podcast. That is awesome. His podcast name is Unloading Meat. Also my nickname in high school. <laughs> um, what a great what a name. a great name for a podcast. Holy shit. And your logo is super dope, dude. I would check that out if you guys. I want to say one last thing. Um, Every week I'm more and more humbled by the reaction we're getting on stage, the amount of people that are coming. Mm-hmm. The meet and greets. I want you guys to know that I keep my ticket prices low on purpose. Yep. I keep my ticket prices low. Somebody said it to me last night. They were like, why is your ticket so cheap? Hey, I, I understand. First of all, I understand that times are tough. Mm-hmm. I have been, I've raised three kids off of $1,000 a month living in one room. In Los and, Angeles. And not being able to go do things that I want to do. And I don't want that to be... I don't want that to happen to anybody who follows me. And so there eventually there may be upfront tickets that are more expensive, but I'm never going to price people out. Yep. We keep our merch cheap. We keep our seats, the ticket prices cheap because I want to, I want to be accessible to everybody who wants to come. Mm-hmm. And, and so, our, and our meet and greets are free. Meet and greets are free, dude. Yo, at that, at uh Canes, that must've been 200 people long. At least. It was a good amount of people last night, too. It, it, yeah, for sure. Holy crap. And we're there. Look, dude, some of those meet and greets are hours long. Yeah. But but we're going to say what's up to every single one of you because, again, the fact that we are even on your guys' list to it's super humbling. come out so, and see for a couple hours is awesome. I so, just want I know I say this at a bunch of podcasts, but I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart to be my age, to be able to still be doing this, to still love doing it, to be able to travel with you, dude. Um, is like 
I thought my dream a long time ago was to have a talk show called the Josh Wolf Show, which I did. Which you did. Which, by the way, it, it is a, if it was a dream, great. You accomplished that dream, and then you came up with a new dream. But it doesn't touch this one. I want you to know that. It's pretty good. Um, and so we love you guys. We love you guys. Go do something nice for somebody else. Yeah. That's all I'll say. Except for that woman who did the autism comment. Fuck her. Or the woman last night in the front of the crowd who said she wouldn't shut up. I liked her. No, she was nice. Yeah, but, she was She was super nice. But she did her. not come see you after the show. And also, one last thing. To those of you who are sharing these stories with us, these personal stories yeah. about us helping you through times or the laughter, I just want you to know that they mean a lot to us yeah I, there i'm not it's humbling when you send it to when you send a, a dm or you tell me stories in the meet and greet it is not lost on me um and it, it makes me feel like we're doing something that means something to people mm -hmm. and that that is like we have a purpose yeah it's it it's it's amazing so you guys really have helped fill me up man that whoa, sounded whoa, dirty pause, but it wasn't pause, yeah, pause, sounded pause, pause. yeah yeah <laughs> time out <laughs> Yeah, listen, all I know is I, that I played at a place a night before Hanson did, and I'm going to put that on the resume. My man, all right. lo love you. Love you. Later. Later, guys.